Guys, I got it. The top 10 reasons why you're stuck at 3-5. That 3-5 level can be so frustrating. You might be going along in your tennis game, you get to a 2-5, you're excited. You get to a 3-0 within a year or two. Next thing you know, you're playing at a 3-5 level and you get stuck there. I've seen it happen over and over again. So this is the top 10 reasons why you are stuck at that 3-5 level. So get, let's get right into this with reason number one. So reason number one why you're stuck at the 3-5 level is shot selection. And most people get intimidated by this idea, this topic of shot selection. They think that it has to be way more complicated than it actually has to be to get to the next level. And actually what you need to do is simplify things and just change habits. One of the habits I see very simply can be to change from having that temptation to hit down the line passing shots off return of serves and hit the ball cross court. As simple as that might take you to the next level because even though you probably heard it over and over again, old habits die hard and I see people hitting too many down the line returns. I'm analyzing a lot of people's matches right now. I see too many down the line returns. They're not good enough and they're missing and this is something you want to avoid, all right? And you may be getting away with this at the 3-0 and 3-5 level. Just think, if you're a 3-0 or 3-5, your shot does not have to be as good, right? This is a shot like that. That might be good enough if somebody's not confident at the net. But if you hit that same shot to somebody who is a 4-0 player, it's gonna come back, you're gonna get a pro pen sandwich right in your face. You can't be hitting that shot. So you're gonna know that and what are you gonna do? You're gonna try and go for a little more once you start to see that every time you go down the line, it's being put away on you. So then you're gonna go for a little more and you're gonna miss wide, okay? So what you wanna do instead is hit most of your returns, nice solid cross court, especially if they're a certain value, you wanna be going at their feet. Now me, I'm a lefty, I was demonstrating right-handed, but as a lefty, if I do want to go down the line, I want to wait for the ball to be more on this inside because now if I hit this shot, now I can almost treat the down the line shot as a cross court shot and I have a lot more margin for error. See how I'm able to take that and, and put it in the alley there? And plus it's also coming in at your point, which makes it a lot harder. So a simple tip on shot selection, just right off the bat, and there's lots of things that you can start to do to play a little smarter, but a simple tip is just, let's avoid going down the line on our return to serves. Get nice cross court return to serves, and the occasional time when you wanna keep your opponent honest, because you just can't hit every single return cross court, wait for that ball to come on your inside, and this is a great time to go at the net person. It's gonna be a, a trickier value for them, and plus you have more room to work across the court to miss. If you're a little late, the ball's probably gonna stay in, right? And then if you time it just right, you'll be able to put it in the alley. So let's get to reason number two. Reason number two you're stuck at that 3-5 level is the way you transition from the baseline to the net. And I see people do this all day long, especially if you're gonna get a forehand and you're in an Eastern or semi-Western grip. People are not changing their grip. Okay, you should know by now, if you're getting up to that 4-0 level, that you should be in a continental grip. And some of you are and some of you are not. But even the ones that are, I find that, it's, that many people still are not changing their grip after they hit that approach shot. They're hitting that approach shot, they're coming in, and they're getting stuck right about here for the first volley, which you're gonna have to hit a lot of volleys here. And if you still have that, that west semi-western grip, when the ball comes, you're gonna have to volley like this. Now, if the rack, if the ball hits the racket, you see, it's gonna, look how that racket's moving if you're in that semi-western grip, especially if you hit the bottom of the strings. See that's moving down, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have hitting a lot of volleys into the net, or if you're aware of this, you're like, oh, if I come like this, I, I, it's gonna go in the net, so I gotta open up my frame. Well, doing that with a semi-western grip, most of the time, it's gonna pop the ball up and long. So you have to learn how to transition as soon as you hit that approach shot right to the continental grip. And it's kind of like you're uh, in the old west and you're working on your draw. You gotta get good at your draw approaching here. So the way you wanna do it is you're hitting that approach shot and as you're coming here to the follow through, I suggest that you catch your follow through, especially in the beginning when you're working on this new transition grip move. And so you wanna come here, hit, now watch this, as I come there, now as I'm coming down, I've made the grip change. Let me show you what I'm doing there. I'm coming here, I'm hitting, now as I'm catching, I'm making the grip change right there and then gain the ray position. 
So you gotta be able to do that quickly, obviously, to do that. So you can just practice this around the house. You can practice on the court where you're working on getting that short ball. You hit it, you come, you switch. See, I've already switched. Now I'm in that continental grip. And this is super important because you're gonna get a lot of volleys here at your waist. So if you get them at your waist, you can make this shot. Any down here, you can also make this shot. Up here, you can make this shot. If you're stuck with this grip, you see, when you're playing closer to the net with this grip, you can kind of get away with anything. This is as long as you can hit the ball in the center, this grip is not killing you. But why you need that continental grip is as balls are coming at your waist and lower, you need that continental grip so you can still put some pop behind that volley, make a lot of your volleys. So that's reason number two. Let's get into reason number three on why you're stuck at the 3-5 level. Reason number three why you're stuck at the 3-5 level is overheads. Missing too many overheads. And I'm about to give you some very valuable advice that you've probably never been given before. And it actually comes from a Division I college tennis player from his coach. One of my students, Carver Arant, who now plays Division I college tennis, they actually almost beat the Georgia Bulldogs. So it goes to show how good a team this is. And listen to what the coach told them. The coach told them, Hey team, I don't want you hitting any overheads that go past the service line. I know you're not gonna believe that, but that's actually what the coach said. These are great tennis players. These are tennis players that can hit some awesome overheads past the service line, trust me. But the coach said, the reason why is you are missing too many overheads. And, in, and if you know anything about college tennis, they're just playing like, I think, a six game pro set right now. I don't even think they play eight games anymore. I think they play one set and it's for a point. Lots of times that determines who wins and loses the entire competition between the two teams playing against each other. So they cannot miss this shot. So what the coach suggested is, hey, you guys all have awesome, huge forehands. I suggest you let that ball bounce and then you crush your forehand. Well, so that's one option you have, is to let the ball bounce, and then I wouldn't suggest if you're a 3-5 that you practice crushing the forehand, but you instead practice putting the ball to where you can't get hurt. Most of the time you're going to have the net person right in front of you, so you want to clear that and, and put the ball back in play cross court. That's one option. Another option is, and not a lot of people talk about this, and I suggest you get really, really good at this, is getting a push volley, a push high volley. So it's not quite a normal volley, it's not an overhead, it's a push and you actually want to kind of almost lob this ball, okay? And I'm telling you, it's gonna work at the 3-5 level like a charm, and at the 4-0 level, even up to the 4-5 level, this shot's gonna work. Rather than coming here and hitting an overhead that's a little bit out of your skill set and hitting it long, you're gonna come here, you're gonna push it and get back into the court. You see, that time the ball is in the air, that's giving you time to reestablish net position. Plus when the ball bounces, it's most likely gonna bounce high. I actually was running a, a camp out at Newcomb's Ranch, which I love, it's the greatest place ever. And this guy Joe, who is one of my students, he's come to several of our camps, love him too. He's a 4.0 player. And I was giving this concept to him, at first he didn't buy in. He kept hitting overheads when they go past the service line and he'd miss them. Almost every time I said, Joe, just trust me on this new technique of just pushing that in. And he kind of looked at me like, I don't want to do that. Then I said, just trust me, just try it because you're missing your overhead. He tried it. He put these balls back deep, just like I'm suggesting. Lots of times I think he was hitting it to the ad side, so it was going up high to people's backhand. So he's coming here, pushing it back in play, reestablishing that position, and he won the point almost every time. And guess what? He was hitting that ball against other 4-0 players, and they were missing the passing shot. He didn't even have to hit a volley. So the play is this. You're here. The ball is going to take you past the service line. You're going to push it, get back in, reestablish net position, and win the point from there. Let's get to reason number four. Reason number four, you're stuck at the 3-5 level, is you are obsessed with advanced stroke technique. Now I know this is probably going to piss you off a little bit because you're like, well Pete, I'm watching your channel, everybody's channel on YouTube, and you're all talking about advanced stroke technique. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing to try and learn. It's just that you're going about it the wrong way. You're watching a video and then you're trying to bring that video you saw right into the match. And 
the new technique is not what Rick Macy likes to call baked in. You gotta bake that in. You gotta bake the new technique into your body before you're gonna start to see it be successful in a match. So you've got to do things like, you know, just come out with the basketballs like I have here and do lots of bounce feeds to yourself and do lots of work on the ball machine, do lots of shadow strokes and then rally in the short court. There's a whole progression process you have to go through and keep opening up the practice. You know, start simple and then you open up, make it more, uh, more of competition and then eventually you're going to start to get this advanced stroke technique to work in your matches. But until it's baked in, I suggest you go with what you have and the skills you have, the strengths you have, use that more in your matches and then you're going to do better in your matches and then slowly implement the advanced stroke technique. And also you don't need to make your new technique exactly carbon copied like Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal. You take some of the general ideas that are in their stroke technique and you see if you can implement it and apply it to your game. Many of you are just overthinking your technique as you're in, there in your match. If you're in a match and you're trying to think of step one, two, and three on a stroke, that's way too much thought to hit that shot so it's not ready to be used in a match yet. Does that make sense? So we're going to go to reason number five and I'm really going to mess with your mind. Okay, reason number five is you have inferior stroke technique. Now this is a different crowd I'm talking to than the ones who are obsessed with advanced technique, okay? There are people out there, many, many people, in fact most people, they're able to get to a 3-5 by developing some racket head awareness and just being able to poke the ball around the court and put it in play a lot. <laughs> and you're going to be able to start winning a lot of matches and that's going to take you to a 3-0, to a 3-5 and then all of a sudden you're going to look at the 4-0 players and you're going to notice that when you get out there with them that they might just have too much power, they have too many spins, they have too much skill. If you're getting out there and you're feeling overmatched by skill and technique, then yes, there's a problem. You need to improve your technique. Jorge Capistain, one of my favorite coaches from TennisCon, who's a master USPTA and PTR professional, says it the best. It's like you want to get your strokes to a range of acceptability, meaning that your strokes have to be proficient and be able to hit spins on your serves and on your forehand getting top spin and be able to slice the ball on your forehand and backhand. You need to develop all the basics to where you have it in a range of acceptability. It looks good and it's functional. Once you do that, you can actually become easily a 4-0, 4-5, even a 5-0 to where your strokes are solid, they're good. They're not perfect, they're not amazing, but they have that range of acceptability. So if you're not there yet, that's what you got to work on if you want to go up to the 4-0 level. Reason number six why you're stuck at the 3-5 level is your second serve is not good enough. Now, if, you are, if you're hitting a second serve and you notice that the competition is always moving, creeping much more forward on you and they're able to hit the ball easily and come to the net on you or attack your partner and just crush them in the face with a rocket ship forehand, then you know that your second serve is not good enough. Now your goal is not to get your second serve so good that you're hitting a bunch of aces. Your main priority is to make sure that you have a second serve that is not easily attacked. That's it. If you can get your second serve good enough to where you have a 50-50 chance to win the point, then you're starting to develop a real second serve that can hold up in matches and can get you a lot of W's and get you that next level. So the number one thing holding most people back is they either A, still have the frying pan grip, so they're hitting the ball very flat, or they have the continental grip, but with unknowingly, they're flipping back into the pizza move, which essentially just gives them a frying pan result, right? So let me show you what that would look like. You're here, you think I'm doing everything right, I'm making this important transition to the continental grip and then you throw the ball up and as soon as you throw that ball up and you get to about here, your racket flops back. So you see that? You're here, you're in the continental grip, you're looking like a pro and then the racket flops back 
and then you go and you hit your second serve and it's weak. What you need to learn how to do is to be able to come up on what I call the edge of the racket. You see this part of the frame, this is what's so hard, this is one of the toughest things to do in tennis, is that edge basically comes at the tennis ball till almost the last frame. It's coming here and then boom, all of a sudden it's hitting the ball and putting some kind of friction, some kind of spin on it. So it looked like this, I'm coming here, I'm coming up on edge, I'm about to hit the ball and then all of a sudden my strings can touch it and I'm putting some spin on it. And most people can't do that. So you want to really, really develop that so you can get a real second serve that you can swing as hard as you want and the ball goes in every time and your opponent has a tough time attacking your second serve. Then you're in business, then you're on your way to the four or five level. Oh man, you gotta be loving this list. If you're loving this list, give this video a thumbs up right now and also comment below. Let me know, have I mentioned any that's keeping you back from getting to that next level or what is the thing that you think is keeping you back from getting to the next level? Okay, let's go to reason number seven why you're stuck at the three five level and that is, is you don't have a reliable weapon that you can use on a big point. You got to have a weapon, I think, if you want to start playing advanced levels of tennis that you can go to, especially when the pressure's on, to either get some free points or shorten the points, make the situation heavily in your favor. If you're out there and you're always just in survival mode trying to keep the ball in play, well yes, it's going to keep you in points, it's going to help you win a lot of points, but it's not really, you can't really rely on that strategy when the situation gets tight. Because when you get tight, you want to be able to have something that you feel confident in that you can get some easy free points. So for me, as a lefty, let's say especially I'm playing some doubles here and I get nervous, I've got a slice serve that I know if I hit it well, I can get my opponent way off the court that's going to set up my uh, net person for an easy volley to put away or I might get an easy volley that I can put away or a short ball that I can crush for a forehand or if I can swing that ball far enough off the court, I might be able to hit it so far off the court that, like that, that the ball might not even come back. They might not even get to that ball, okay? So you want to have a reliable weapon that you trust that you know is going to earn you some easy free points. Let's go to reason number eight. Now reason number eight why you are stuck at the 3-5 level is your unwillingness to take a step back. And I really understand how this can happen. Let's think about where you are right now. You've basically gone up many levels at your club to where there's people looking way down the ladder at you, right? You, you start at a 2-5, then you got to a 3-0, and you got to a 3-5. So you beat a lot of players to get there. And what you might have to do to get to the 4-0 level is take a step back, lose to some of those people that you're used to beating and beating handily so you can add some more skills to get to the 4-0 level. That's often what it takes and lots of people have gotten to the 4-0 or 4-5 level unless they grew up playing junior tennis. They made that decision somewhere along the line like, look, I'm going to get these things, I'm going to take my lumps, I'm going to lose some matches, going to lose to some people I know I should beat, which is really hard because think about if you've been playing Frank or Judy for years and you've been beating them consistently like 6-2 and all of a sudden you go out and you lose a match and you're worried that everybody at the club is going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you lost to Frank. I beat Frank last week and you're thinking, yeah, I know, but I'm better than you. And yet, So it just becomes a whole mental, social status thing to where it's hard for you to maybe accept that you're going to go out and lose to some people that you know you're better than and then you know if you beat them, they're going to go around the club and they're going to basically brag to their buddies that they just beat you because they're super happy and excited that they beat you. So they're going to talk about it. They will talk about it. So you just have to accept that. You have to know internally what's really going on, have the inner confidence to accept these bad losses so that one day you can start to beat people at the 4-0 level, people you've never beaten, and then you can go around the club and you say, yeah, you know, Mark, yeah, I've never beaten him before, today I took him out. Right? See, that, that's what's going to be happening. And uh, so, and then poor Mark's going to want to go kill himself because you lost to Frank like three months earlier. Who's <laughs> like, anyway, it's a whole thing. But you know where I'm going with this, and that's going to help you get to that 4 0 level. Oh man, we're almost to the big reveal. We're, we're almost to number 10, but we're at number 9. 
and you can't skip this one. Number nine is fitness. Maybe your fitness level is not where it needs to be to be able to compete with the 4-0, 4-5, and especially 5-0 players. As you see people go up the ranks, there's one thing I noticed too. They start to look a little more athletic, be in better shape, have better endurance, and a little better speed. So these are things that you're gonna have to start to work on if you wanna to get to that next level, and age is not an excuse, right? I'm not saying that's not a factor, but it's not an excuse because I have seen people in their 70s in amazing shape who move great, in their 60s, and certainly in their 50s. There's a guy, Jeff Greenwald, who is 52, who says he's a better player now at 52 than he was at like 27. So if you work on your fitness, that's only gonna make you a much better player. It's also going to make you a lot more mentally tough because when you come on the court and you know the work you've put in off the court, that carries to your confidence on the court. So make sure you get yourself in better shape. If you find that you're losing matches that you know you should win just because you got too tired, that is not an excuse. Number 10, and maybe the most important, is poor practice habits. Now I'm not saying you're not working hard enough. Right? You might even be working too hard, but it's poor practice habits. I'm really starting to have many eye-opening experiences as a coach with a program I do called Next Level University to where people send me their videos and I get to see the way that they're practicing, the things that they're doing to try and improve. Most people want to improve their serve, right? So they'll send me a video of their serve. This is actually what happens. They'll send me a video of their serve. Most people are back here. This is what they do. They go out with their trusty basket of balls and they start to work on their serve and they're doing some things and I notice, aha, that's the number one thing you're doing wrong, okay? That's the number one thing you're doing wrong. I want you to, most of the time I'll, I'll send them up to the service box. I want you to go up to the service box. I want you to watch this one video I'm, I'm gonna accompany with your critique and I want you to do that drill and then I want you to send it back. And this really lets me know that these people are going to another level. They're, they're first of all videoing themselves, which barely anybody does, which you should be doing and they're sending it to an expert to take a look at what can they do to do better. And then I'm sending them very specific instructions like, hey, I want you to stand here and I want you to do X, Y, and Z and then send me back the video. And guess what happens the very next week? They'll send me back the video with nothing changed, them standing at the baseline again with their basket of balls doing the same exact bad habit. When I just ask them to do one very simple thing. Now the cool thing about this program is that I keep their feet to the fire. Even if they do that and they send it back, I then will tell them, hey, I told you to do this one drill, you're gonna go back the next week and do it. And we, and, and that's the way, there's nothing wrong with these people. There's plenty of things that I do in life that I know I should be doing something else, but since no one's there watching me and holding me accountable, I don't do it. So that's the beauty of the program. So if you, if you would like to try this program to where you can have me be your coach and it's a ridiculously great price, then I suggest you sign up for this free training series I'm gonna put you through right now, which will reveal to you the five big rocks, the five big fundamental rocks you've gotta master if you wanna to go to the next level. And then we can work together if you'd like to where you can be sending me videos and I will always pick out the number one thing you need to be doing to get yourself to the next level. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. That's your top 10 list. Review this list over and over again. If you do and you work on it, you will go to that 4-0 level. And don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, you gotta ding the notification bell so you always know when my videos come out. And definitely like and comment below. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you on another video real soon. Hey, Totally Obsessed Tennis Player, if you are stuck at that 3-5 or 3-0 level, you wanna to go to the next level, then try my Totally Obsessed Tennis Club for free. Click on the free training button now and get access for 30 days. It'll give you access to all my courses, plus you're gonna get personal coaching from me. Take care and have an awesome day.